Welcome to Fresh Off The Board. Uh, I'm delighted to uh, have uh, the company of Dhruv Krishnaswamy. He's one of the students we worked with in 2017-18, and that's when he applied to colleges uh, from the Heritage School in Gurgaon. Uh, I recall many things about him, always having that high energy to do new things, uh, try out uh, everything possible, as well as take initiative. Uh, and also lead. And I think that's something I'd like to learn more about your life at UC Berkeley. I know you'll be graduating in 2022, but like the hyperspeed that you've always been <laughs> leading your life with, I, I'm, I'm told that you want to graduate sooner than that. Uh, we'll learn about your two majors and your interest in theater in the course of the next 15, 20 minutes, plus, of course, life uh, in general. So first question to you, Dhruv, is... Uh, how was it like settling in into a large public university like UC Berkeley? Um, so first of all, thank you so much for having me on the podcast. And um, and moving into sort of settling into Berkeley, I think initially there were always going to be challenges. And I faced sort of challenges as well in terms of settling uh, in with, uh, with, you know, people who you've never met before, especially since they come from such a different cultural background. Um, and, you know, we have this... And, and personally for me, I hadn't been to the U.S. before. So going to college was the first time that I was going to the U.S. as well. And you have this idea in your head from watching films and TV shows of what being in the U.S. is going to be like. So you come with these sort of preconceived notions. Um, and, and, and sometimes, you know, it, it, you know it, it can be kind of jarring when, when it isn't what you thought it would be. And, you know, talking to people there is kind of, is, it's a different experience because they have different cultural backgrounds and all of that. So initially making friends was a challenge, but um, at Berkeley, they have, you know, these orientation programs and these orientation groups to try to, uh, uh, you know, group you together with, with people who live in, in the similar, in the same building as you, so that you're able to make connections uh, and, you know, meet more people. And um, in fact, two of my closest friends I met in my orientation group, uh, who are still extremely close to me uh, to this day. And, um, the truth that of the matter is you don't necessarily need to connect with everyone that you meet because it's not going to happen. Uh, but as long as within the first semester or so you're able to get a handful of solid, you know, good friends, I think that's what that's what uh, is important. That's great. And uh, what about uh, just the orientation in terms of academic advising and the support? Since most classes are pretty large, some of your classes could be also online. <laughs> I'm not sure. But uh, what kind of advice and support is provided during those early days? Um, so initially, you have, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of hard, not going to lie about navigating through the system because, uh, you know, there are a lot of resources, but they're kind of scattered, if I, can, if I can call it that. You know, there are a lot of things that you have access to, but you don't know that you have access to them. Um, so initially, navigating the maze of which counselor to approach, who do I speak to about XYZ is kind of challenging. But I think after a point, uh, I think after dealing with the system for a semester or so, it can, it, it makes a lot more sense. You know, you, you you begin to learn that you have certain advisors you can approach, major specific, as well as for the college. Um, and, you know, you begin to learn about different mental health resources in case you have trouble settling in and how you can use those resources. Um, so it's, it's so I think definitely it takes time at a place like Berkeley. Uh, since you know you have so many resources which you you may not know how to access, um, so I think it definitely does take time to settle yeah. in a place like Berkeley. And having done IB at the Heritage School, do you think uh, it really helped you sort of uh, get a head start in some sense, or even cope with what's required? I think for me, it greatly did help. Um, because I was able to waive my college writing requ requirements, for, which are actually two courses um, which I'd have to take. Um, so I was able to waive A and B because I had English higher level in the IB. Uh, um, so I was able to waive both of the requirements, so that helped. Other than that, I could waive out of the intro econ course, intro sort of calculus course and all of that. So that greatly helped. And since I'm trying to graduate in 3.5 years and you know, with two majors, this kind of helped sort of boost my progress and, and give me uh, Sort of a leg up. Um, though with that said, um, I have friends who are from CBSC as well. Uh, you know, who who have sort of seamlessly settled in CBSC, ISC, and all of that. I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. You just need to go in with an open mind. You know, with a, a sort of desire to learn and and be flexible and adaptable. Uh, and I think people should be fine. Fantastic. So, if you were to 
look at your choices and now you've declared your major and are working towards doing an economics and a data science major how was that decision made not just about two majors but me entering through this decision of choosing econ, econ and then data science well um for me i always knew that i wanted to work um, you know you know in sort of use two different fields and work in an interdisciplinary sort of manner um so for me double major was 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 in fact the obvious choice that was in fact the reason why i applied to the us uh, because you know it gave me the flexibility to play around with majors um so i always knew i wanted to do something sort of technical alongside with economics not to say that economics is not technical it's extremely it can be extremely technical but uh, it's like a social science as well um so it's, it's something that i really wanted to do you know a combination of both and um uh, so it so i think the obvious choices for the technical major would have been you know something like a cs computer science or statistics or um, or applied math or something along those lines um but the way i chose it was i wanted to choose a major which would um which would work very well with interdisciplinary sort of focus and uh, you know which would which would essentially help make me a better economist i think that was the primary focus um and i wasn't too interested in, and um and i think that sort of shortened it down to to cs and data science my two choices and um and for me right off the bat i knew that i wasn't interested in taking classes in you know computer security or you know uh, you, you know get into compiler level stuff or you know get into too much cs cs like you know uh, too much cs jargon i would rather sort of use the cs knowledge and apply it to solve other problems um so i think data science worked out for me as well uh since you know i'm taking enough cs and stats classes um that that you know i'm able to develop some sort of skill set but at the same time um not too much that i'm you know getting bored with just cs in fact it's allowing me to apply it to other fields makes sense i think and also if you could talk about Into your interest in economics because economics has several tracks too. Uh, where do you think you're headed with that? Um, so I think right now I'm still trying to figure out what part of economics interests me. Though I do know that um, um, that I'm interested in in sort of economics, which is uh, which is rooted firmly in in data based decision making uh, and you know uh, econometrics and um things where you actually have to analyze data and and solve problems based on your analysis of it um so, but right now i'm still trying to figure out you know I'm, i'm in the process of taking different economics electives uh for instance this summer i'm taking a fine a class on financial economics and another on health economics um you know the health economics one is particularly interesting uh, you know given the current circumstances that we're all facing so you know it's interesting to see how government might optimally spend money how an individual might decide um you know the trade off between spending money on health versus on other things and and you know explore that side of things um but i think the core sort of theme that i'm trying to focus on is uh is is sort of economics where data plays a central role in in you know coming to economic decisions fantastic we'll get back to uh, understanding that a little bit more if you were to uh, highlight some sort of resources available to you know for students who really want to go deep into such topics uh, being a large school of course there are teaching assistants and now you are a teaching assistant at the data science sort of course that uh, one of the professors runs uh, so what kind of resources did you use or your friends used uh, and uh, what should people know about surviving and thriving in a large university i think for me it comes down to one uh, finding a, a good community and um, and you know finding surrounding yourself by like minded individuals and people you know who are constantly trying to push themselves to become better um and to i'd say um stepping out of your comfort zone really and trying out new things so that you're able to learn um, what you want to do um so moving to the so on the sticking to the first point i think it's important because you'd want to obviously have a, a community around you you know in situations where you know you're you you're overwhelmed and you're unsure what to do and you know you just want support so in those cases it's good to have a community around you uh, of supportive friends and people you can genuinely talk to about your problems um and this helps especially at a last large school where you don't want to feel lost uh by you know hundreds of challenges you might have or you know oh, who do i approach and all of that you always want to have friends and 
uh, supporting and caring people. And secondly, I'd say um, one thing which, which which worked well for me was I was able to take um, I was able to take classes in in different sort of uh, areas to to initially explore my interests and see what I wanted to do. And I think that's why um, I think the U.S. system works very well, at least for me, because I'm able to explore what I'm really interested in uh, and and sort of like pick and sample before I really commit to a, a major. Um, so I think uh, at a large public university, you always like you need to sort of stay strong and not feel bad if 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 somebody doesn't give you the the time of day, because a lot of the times you meet someone for two minutes, you know they don't really connect with you during an interaction, and then you never see them ever again. And um, the idea was kind of hard for me to deal with that. Oh, how can this person not just not care about this interaction anymore and just go on with their life? But over time, I think. Um, you know, I've just learned to realize that yeah, it's fine. You know, if we don't, if I don't connect with another person, it's completely fine. It's time to move on. Just yeah. right. So it's as of living in a large city, and you know, you, you don't have to sort of know that it's just going to be those two hundred people you'd want to meet every day, yeah. or at least bump into every day. So uh, if we were to switch gears a little bit and talk about your personal uh, uh, life and also the way you look at life. Uh, what are the three words that would describe or rather capture your strengths? Interesting. Um, say one uh, is ambitious, um, where I'm constantly trying to uh, get, become a better version of myself and improve. I'd say second is um, reflective, where any single thing that I do um, if, if it was bad or good, if it was success or a failure, I try to reflect on, oh, what could I have done better? How could I have improved? Uh, is there any way for me to reinvent myself in this field? How can I sort of push the boundaries of things? Um, and I'd say the third thing is, um, I'd say I, it's probably not a word, but I'd say I'm the kind of person who is who, uh, who is seeking novelty or seeking, um, uh, seeking sort of, uh, I'd say, change. Um, in that I constantly want to um, try to find new things to explore, you know, new people to meet, uh, constantly put myself out of my comfort zone and sort of seek uh, like adventure and challenge and that kind of stuff. Um, so I try to put myself in positions where I feel uncomfortable and, and where I sort of uh, don't feel at ease because I find that it's helped me push boundaries and push myself. So that's um, actually linked to my next question. So which is, uh, uh, can you reflect on a time when you embarrassed yourself or you've had a, something like a failure or a mistake. Uh, what was the learning? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Most definitely. Uh, I think one that I like to talk about is probably the, something that happened this semester itself. Um, so I was running for, I'm act <clears throat> so I recently actually got elected as an ASUC senator, which is, uh, uh, it's essentially a student government senator at Berkeley. And I got elected as one. Um, and um, so, what happened? So essentially, there was another Indian running, but she wasn't from India. She was from the Bay Area, um, and there were there are about fifty to twenty people elected as senators, but uh, there are about 50, 50 to sixty people who run every year on average. And um, and there was something called the South Asian Caucus, where different South Asian organizations on campus sit together and see which South Asian candidate to support. You know, it could be um, an international student like myself, or it could be. Um, like, you know, someone from the Bay Area who's essentially South Asian, but is an American and has lived there her whole life. Um, so I knew that I wasn't going to win the South Asian caucus vote where I say that, where they say that I'm endorsed by the South Asian caucus because, uh, uh, because essentially the, the girl, my competition was, um, she essentially was the chief of staff of the, um, of the person organizing the whole event. And I knew that, you know, she knew all of these South Asian club um, sort of leaders on a much more personal and intimate level, and um, and you know, so it was essentially just both both of us going up there making speeches about our plan for the South Asian community and all of that. And in the end, I guess it could be considered a failure in that I did not get the endorsement, um, but I think I gained a lot more from that in uh, in that I was able to bounce my ideas off of people before actually starting hard campaigning. I was able to get feedback on my ideas. Um, I was able to get my name out. Um, so even if somebody didn't vote for me, at least they realize that, oh, this guy is contesting for the elections and sort of this is interesting. You know, in fact, I'm sure many of our listeners uh, would like to know more about student government 
governance and uh, at berkeley in particular <laughs> which is uh, such a active student body uh, and now with this uh, south asian sort of association so yeah what is it like to uh, be part of a very activistic sort of uh, university environment and what is the leadership what are the leadership challenges student government poses um so i've been involved in student government since my um, first semester in college um but, but in different different capacities in that i was uh, initially i worked in the office of another asuc senator my first two semesters i worked in different um i worked for, uh, i worked under different uh, elected representatives um then the semester uh, then like a few semesters later i also worked in the elections council which is a body responsible for organizing the elections and and finally this semester i decided to contest for the elections and try to be a representative myself um i think it definitely is um in a way it's similar to india in many ways in that people sort of really get behind politics in a campus like berkeley at least and comparing to india where people are really passionate about politics and activism and all of that um but at, but at the same time i think um uh, at least in in the us you have sort of uh, it's extremely left leaning the whole uh, uh, the whole sort of student body and all of that and i found that um honestly people if if someone is from a has like a conservative ideology in terms of their thinking and in terms of their political ideology if they're kind of right leaning they might not feel at home at berkeley since everybody is trying to uh, just push the left sort of ideas ahead and um so I, it definitely is an interesting situation to be in um and you know it's i i'm learning something new every day um but i mean if someone from the us or someone from anywhere in the world uh, you know has a more conservative approach or conservative sort of thinking then i think they might not be comfortable in such an environment because of the idea that that keep coming up got it but what does it take for roof to keep doing this you know you were a student council head at school in gurgaon uh, and then what is it that people like you want out of leadership is it the power is it the uh, you the work you just enjoy helping people or a combination think, of all <laughs> um i think for me it's just uh, it's it's i guess it's just trying to create some sort of impact on the community in any way possible and um and the student government here is also a way for me to do that you know just make my mark or leave my mark in the community help some people if if possible at the end of it um, so that's essentially what i'm trying to do but um but that not to say that it hasn't been difficult uh, the student government here at least this semester essentially putting my face out there and trying to be in the spotlight it has been challenging at times because i've heard of people like you know publicly uh passing comments about me about you know trying to perform character assassinations in public and you know i i guess it's political slander if i can call it that so on a small scale i've kind of realized how actual politicians might feel you know where people talk about them on a daily basis and you know the spotlight is on them for every word that they say um so I definitely kind of realized how challenging that that can be um not but, to make it affect your day to day life and academics is obviously a big thing uh, so kudos to you well done uh, i'm going to uh, move to another area of uh, our conversation now and it's more to do with the uh, involvement in other things i know when we've had a conversation in the past you said something like trying new things and having even an interest in theater uh, how is it to easy is to or hard is it to balance two majors and try new things plus what is it about theater that you like um i think that's a very good question um because uh because you always caught in this sort of uh, you you caught making decisions whether you know how how many new things do i try because you also have to allot time to to doing your academics well and doing a good job with that um but for me i think well, uh, like i've always kept it uh as a priority for me that you know i want to use college as a time to try new things it's sort of a relatively um in in my, in my at least i believe that in my life it's a relatively safe period where i can just try new things without having too many repercussions uh, in the you know try new interests try new activities and all of that it's not that i have to own you know i you have a household dependent on me and all of that thankfully um so touch wood hopefully that so that is all possible uh but i think 
like the the thing that i'm kind of chasing is is putting myself self in uncomfortable positions and i think theater gives me a way to do that um you know because if if you're in the, suddenly you know on stage in front of you know 40 50 people you know it definitely does sort of turn my stomach a bit to for that kind of position to happen so i like to put myself in those kind of uncomfortable positions and theater allows me to do um just that um and it definitely has allowed me to explore different forms of um or different ideas such as uh, you know being an international student should my accent change when i'm on stage uh turn a portrait character or how should i sort of behave uh because you know i'm interacting with people who have an accent to me so how do those dynamics sort of change so definitely allowed me to explore and um you know interesting questions uh and deal with interesting situations um and i really enjoy the people i meet from it because i think um i wouldn't have met those kind of people otherwise i'm able to meet biology majors uh, electrical engineering majors even theater kids themselves and i think i'm able to meet a nice mix of people through theater so it really definitely is hard balance to strike but if you're able to find something i think you should find ways to pursue it all right that's great actually uh, now i w- i have a few questions and these questions are very relevant for high schoolers who are choosing colleges uh, what is it that you think they should know about berkeley which you didn't know <laughs> and uh, and who should be applying uh, or who shouldn't be applying <laughs> um i think that's a good question in terms of who um who shouldn't be applying I, i'd say if um i'd say one thing definitely to keep in mind is if you have a certain mindset where you know you might not um uh, or, or sort of like a very fixed mindset and if you're not comfortable dealing with ideas related to the left very honestly like then you probably shouldn't like berkeley may not be the place for you because you're constantly pushed yeah, from canada from the yeah. left um so in that case probably you know you you should reconsider it um in other cases i think um as long as you're someone who is willing to put in hard work put in effort and and really go out there and and seek opportunities because opportunities aren't going to get handed to you on a platter you will have to go outside try to speak to administrators um try to go outside make new friends try to join new clubs so if you're willing to take initiative and are really willing to fight for that and uh, fight for opportunities i think then berkeley is a nice place um though if if you though i it's perfectly acceptable to want a more personalized environment when to be in a class with you know 20 students 10 students um and you know have uh, you know be able to have fruitful discussions and intimately get to know each one of your diff- classmates i think in those cases berkeley may not be a place for you and i think uh, you know more private liberal arts colleges might sort of be more fruitful um because you get more individual attention i have to admit that is uh, sort of um that's something i can't deny you definitely get more individual attention in a smaller college and more sort of um you know you have more time with the professor to actually talk about your ideas mold your thinking etc in such cases i think a, a private liberal arts college would be sure. much better than berkeley yeah about um, uh, admissions now like if you think uh, look at your application file and now having attended school for two and a half sort of years two years what is it that uh, you think worked in your application um to be honest i think for me i guess if i could call it a spike uh, my spike would probably try to uh, would possibly be in like leadership or something or or, uh, or you know yeah i guess leadership would be the 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 word to use i try to you know get into student council in high school i try to uh, get into debating society and hold leadership positions there uh, try to do tedx and i try to get myself involved in activities where um, you know i could actively uh, you know take a role in 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 impacting people and actually um, creating some sort of long lasting impact um, and i think that worked for me with respect to berkeley i think it helped because berkeley is a place which really favors political activism and leadership and free speech movement that kind of stuff so i think the leadership aspect might have worked in that case with student council and all of that excellent i think it's been a fascinating uh, <laughs> conversation just understanding your life and your journey but where is dhruv headed what is it what is next <laughs> that you're focusing on so i'm trying to graduate in 3 and 1/2 years so hopefully fingers crossed uh, if everything works according to plan i should be able to graduate by 
uh, the Dece by December 2021. Um, and after that, I do definitely want to work in the US for a couple of years. Uh, th that is provided, you know, jobs are available because, you know, you never know with Corona and, you know, the, the, the tumultuous times, what, what is going to happen, what is going to be allowed, etc. Uh, so that's my primary sort of thing to work in the US for a few years, gain some experience and uh, really sort of um, be able to hone my craft and gain some experience essentially in the US. Um, I'm not too interested in doing a postgraduate degree, degree, at least at this stage, you know, not master's right after anything of that sort. You know, I want to definitely work for a few years, then decide whether or not I want to <coughs> get back into academia. Um, though uh, I do have to mention that at the back of my mind, I do have the idea of potentially getting into like an economics PhD program or something of that sort. Um, it's something that I'm not going to discount, but uh, still, you know, work is working for a few years is still my priority right now. Great. So if you uh, were to sort of uh, think about opportunities in economics as a field, uh, PhD is in academia, what are the other tracks typically students think of? So this is with respect to economics? Yeah. No. Or even data science. We can combine econ econometrics, data science. What kind of jobs do people sort of look at? I think... Um... Um, right now, at least in economics, I've found that it's becoming a lot more mathematical than before, and people are moving more towards uh, applying technical skills like you know stats, CS, math, all of that into economics and trying to make it a lot more technical. Um, so that's a good or a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. Um, you know, personally for me, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to leverage sort of uh, technical skills and apply it into economics again to. Um, to really make economics an empirical, empirical subject and really try to maximize my learnings from it. But in terms of the tracks, I'd say a lot of friends of mine are getting into investment banking, some of them getting into private equity, venture capital, um, and really get into sort of the finance and entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial side of things. At the same time, I also know people who want to work government jobs, go back to their own respective countries, work in the, um, work in, you know, different government organizations, NGOs, think tanks, those kind of things. Um, and um, and I think a, a third group of people would probably also be those who, who get into consulting, um, who get into these kind of jobs. Sure. Um, and Great. so I think it opens a lot of doors, essentially. Fine. So my last question is about the advice that you could give uh, students who are graduating from school this year, but they don't know when colleges will reopen. And even students who have graduated from college, uh, I know you haven't yet, so giving advice it might be not so relevant, but what are they going through? Uh, and, and especially you, for that matter, you had applied for internships and you can talk about the consequences or whatever of COVID on those offers that you had. Uh, how do you deal with disappointment and what message would you give out to students who are also in the same boat? I think um, I think it's important for all of us to just try to find silver lining <clears throat> in this whole thing and try to find sort of the positives of our situation because there's nothing really we can do other than um, other than actually try to work on improving the future. So we should uh, try to see the positives of it. You know, it's fine if our internship got cancelled. Fine. You know, maybe we can do something better with the time. Maybe use the time to gain more skills. I think online courses are a good thing, which a lot of people are doing. You know, really improve your skills, work on yourself, read more, read the newspaper more, actually, you know, interact with the news, learn about that. Um, maybe improve your writing. Maybe just start writing maybe a 200 word essay every day, really work on that. Um, so I think there are a lot of things you can do. Spend time with your family. I think that's a big thing for people like me who, who are in college, who are not at home. I think, um, I think, although we've spent far too much time, I like to say at this point with our families, uh, <laughs> where it kind of, you're kind of getting jittery and on the edge, but I think it's still a good time to be able to really, um, speak to your parents, speak to your grandparents, really enjoy and spend time with them. Um, but as for high school students, I think if, if there were any advice I'd like to give, it would probably be, um, in terms of the application, I would say, um, <clears throat> try to um, try to create some sort of spike for yourself if you have, you know, two or three years until you have to apply to college. Maybe try to find some way which, which if somebody looks at your profile, they can say, okay, he has some, so he or she has some sort of spike in this area, or you know, there's something that they're clearly really invested in, mm -hmm. and uh, and really show that to your admissions officer. I think. Um, 
That's good. And, but, yeah, I go guess ahead. currently just make the best use of time. So thank you, Dhruv. I think it's been uh, just a joy, just uh, feeling your energy <laughs> across this black mirror that our laptops have. Uh, but looking forward to uh, seeing you at our office. Uh, we will be doing a few webinars again uh, soon uh, on topics. Could be majors. It could be about uh, specific experiences at large universities or even student government governance and issues which you've been uh, sort of been active in. So uh, happy to connect and uh, share information about those events. Looking forward to staying in touch then. Bye. Definitely. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much.